Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. As I've mentioned in other videos, I found an email cache from about oh, four and a half years ago that had a bunch of unanswered questions in it. Now, I would venture to say that the people who've asked those questions have found other answers that work just fine for them, but some of the questions are still of general interest. And we're going to take a look at one of those here. The 2020 to 2023 extra question pool. That's gone. We've got a new one, I know. But it has a question that's interesting. What is the approximate physical length of a solid polyethylene dielectric coaxial transmission line that is electrically one quarter wavelength long at 14.1 megahertz? Okay. What we are looking at here is the velocity factor in the cable. And it varies anywhere from 0.66 for old time cables up to about 0.95 for the current cables like uh, RG8X and things like that. Even LMR uh, 400. Each one has a slightly different velocity factor. What is the velocity factor? Light, oddly, does not travel at the same speed through everything. It travels through air almost at the same velocity it does in a vacuum. So we kind of just make them equal for a ham radio and taking a look at things like that. And this is a cable, Belden, so it must be, it's RG8X, the RG8X cable. And it's got a connector on each end. Now here's the thing I started to mention about the speed of light. Light travels at different speeds based on the material it's traveling through. So it slows down. The maximum speed that you can send a signal down this cable is not at the speed of light, but rather it is at the speed of light times the velocity factor of light in this cable, okay? It's about 95% the normal uh, speed of light. This is where if you're going to connect cables that need to be a certain electrical length, you've got to be very careful to take the velocity factor into account. Now let's take a look at this, because this question has some fun ramifications. Okay, it is a quarter of a wavelength long. So this is lambda over four and it's at 14.1 megahertz. Now we can use the formula for the length of a half wave dipole by doing four, now 468 over the frequency in megahertz equals the length in feet. Okay, now the problem with that is that assumes a 0.95 velocity factor, which is correct for wire, like wire for a dipole. So let's do it in meters, it's 300, or actually 2.9, something like that. And we'll take the 14.1 here and divide it. I got this calculator when I was in the Air Force a million years ago. This still works, it's a solar calculator. 300 divided by 14.1, and we get 21.28 meters, 21.28 meters, okay? Now this is without taking into account any velocity factor, and this is in metric. Now if you fiddle around with this, you can figure out the actual speed of light, because it, it goes into that. That's the speed of light. This is in megahertz, this is in meters, uh, so this is in millions uh, times 10 to the 6. So it's 21.28 meters. Now we're going to divide that by 4 to get a quarter wavelength. And it's 5.319 meters is how far light will travel one wavelength at that frequency right there in a vacuum. Okay. Now what we have here polyethylene dielectric, solid polyethylene dielectric. We have to take a look at that. Okay, this is solid polyethylene dielectric. It should tell us the velocity factor here. Okay, po polyethylene, PE. Polyethylene has a velocity factor of 0.66. Okay, so this is old 
RG8U style cable or something like that. This is what they used during the war, 0.66 polyethylene. Okay, so 0.66. So what we want to do is take this length and multiply it 0.66, so we do that. And we come up with 3.51 meters. It takes light, or radio waves, which are a form of light. It goes slower in this cable. The equivalent distance that it would go, the, the, the length of the coax that would get a quarter wavelength through is 3.51 meters. It has to be shorter than this. This is how fast it would go in a vacuum. But we have to slow it down by a factor of two-thirds. And the listed answer is 3.5 meters. That's what we came up with. Okay, the key is where it says right here, solid polyethylene dielectric coax transmission line, okay? Solid polyethylene. That's old stuff, because uh, the newer cable has softer uh, stuff inside. Okay, but that is the answer. So, speed of light divided by Frequency in megahertz gives you the wavelength in meters, 20 meter band, okay? Now we want a quarter of that, divided by a quarter, you get 5.319, okay? And then to find out how far light will travel in a cable with a velocity factor of 0.66, we multiply the length that will go in a vacuum times the velocity factor and come up with the actual length of coax, 3.51 meters. Okay, that I hope answers your question there. So Daniel, there's your answer, three and a half meters. It does match the one in the book. And I tried to walk you through the thought process. We did the entire thing in metric, which many Americans are not used to doing. The problem with the 468 is it assumes a 0.95 velocity factor, which is the velocity factor in wire, okay? Like a dipole. So if you put up a dipole, the wave actually goes only 0.95 times the distance it would go in a vacuum. So to make a dipole out of wire, we gotta shorten it up to match that. And that's why we use the 468 formula works really well. Plus anytime you're cutting a dipole, you know you're gonna have to trim it. So use the 468 formula and then add several inches or a foot and go wrap it back on itself and get it just tuned up the way you want it. So, that's it. Until we next meet, 73.